Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. I'd kind of been planning these out to be certain lengths of time and how they would fit so that this would end out 4th edition. Didn't quite work out how I planned, but I think we'll, uh, we'll have a decent little time closing things out here. We're gonna look at 1480. First off, I want to talk about the Unbroken Chain. I don't know what the hell sort of writing style Julie Johnson was going for here, but it was not straightforward writing like most of her stuff has been and it just I, I could not follow what was happening at all so I didn't make it very far in this nor did I make it very far in Unbroken Chain The Darker Road uh, the sequel it's frustrating because I really did like uh, some of Jalee's earlier stuff that we read and I'm really interested in the what is it Shatter Kai Sh Shadow Kai or whatever I, I think they're an interesting race, and it would be cool to see stuff about them, but man, could I just not follow this or stay interested, so hey, say jolly. I was super surprised, however, by Gilded Rune, because uh, I haven't enjoyed um, the last few Smendman titles that I've attempted, I think, and I will admit I friggin' hate dwarves. I just find them really dull and boring, and it is difficult for me to read about them for the most part. As I think I mentioned way back when with the Philip Athens Watercourse trilogy, I actually really like his dwarves because they're, they like focus on working. This book worked for me for a few different reasons. Number one, the big sort of hurdle, I guess, to get over for some people is that this is a dwarf book focusing on dwarves, and I think they're the golden dwarves or whatever, uh, fairly close to the cave-in uh, for, uh, like, down in the southeast, if I'm understanding things correctly. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Might want to look it up. In any case, this is a book about dwarves, and the main character is, in fact, a human who realizes through events that the before the book starts that he has a dwarven soul. So he looks like a human, sounds like a human, talks like a human, um, and is a dwarf inside. Some people had a problem with this because I saw a couple of reviews that were like, oh man, we finally get a book about dwarves and it's a, the main star is a damn human. And I guess they felt it was a little like white saviory, but human saviory. And I get that issue. I do. But on the other hand... I think that this is such an amazing allegory for trans rights, and I found that such a fun twist to take on everything. I mean, it's this character who firmly, steadfastly believes that they are a dwarf, yet has to kind of overcome everyone looking at him and seeing something different. And it's always a bit of a challenge with everyone he meets, whether they be human or dwarf or whatever, and sometimes it's easier for him to just pass in certain cases, especially when he's in the human community. I don't know, I just, I found that such a really interesting concept, and it made me enjoy the main character, even though Torin Ironstar, the main character, is frightfully stupid at times. But for whatever reason in this novel... That just came across as, I don't know, kind of endearing? And, uh, like, him just being hard-headed and, and dwarven rather than, like, uh, you know, I want to punch him in the face for really stupid shit? Like, I can't remember the specifics, but the, the one time that it really was like, oh my god, dude, just get over it. His friend basically goes through this portal and says, you know, don't follow me, this is personal. And then I can't remember what he's doing exactly, but he's like futzing around with his stuff and one of his items falls through the portal and he's like, oh well, guess I gotta go. And like it's a one-way portal, it's not as if he could just like step through, grab it and come back. And he's like, oh well, I guess I'm stuck with protecting her now or whatever. And it's like, come on, man, you just, you shouldn't have been doing that in the first place. So the plot is basically Torin has to deal with the outbreak of this thing called the Stone Plague, which is where dwarves turn into stone and die because of it, and it gets pretty brutal. Like, a lot of characters in this novel 
die horribly. And I was pretty surprised by how many that happened to. And I thought that made it a stronger novel because there was a real feeling of like, it gives it a sense of urgency once that plot really kicks in. This is also one of the Forgotten Realms books that came out in paperback that have this weird thing where like the front and back cover are really, really loose and it's very wiggly. I don't know if I like that. It was kind of tough reading it through the whole thing, having to kind of bend it really hard. In any case, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's a book that I'll ever, like, read again, necessarily, but I thoroughly dug my read-through of it. So we could stop the episode there and just have it be a short episode, and I'm fine with that. But I thought I'd take another moment to share something that I really enjoyed about 4th edition, since we are wrapping things up with 4th here. I did my whole spiel last time on the big reason that I think 4th edition works. Let me share now uh, something that I forgot to mention last time, and something that's uh, kind of gone by the wayside because it's become so ubiquitous in the community since then. Fourth edition was the first time that I know of, except maybe I think Hero Labs was doing this before then, but fourth edition was the first time where you could make your character... That's my cat. She's very annoyed because I'm not petting her. Fourth edition was the first time where you could go online and make a character and have it match up to the rules that had just come out. I don't know exactly when it started, and I'm not, and I, I, I do know exactly where it ended. It was right after Dark Sun came out, because basically it was like, you can use this update and nothing more. After that, it gets terrible. But the whole idea of creating and making characters and having them be cloud-based originally sounded really dumb, because it was like, no, I want like a sheet for my character. And then once I realized what it was, I was like, oh, you can just print it out every now and then. That Okay, that works for me. But the fact that you could go onto the site and, you know, or, or download the software or whatever, and you could go in and it was like, okay, class. And then there are all the classes that have been released as of yet for fourth edition. And when you click on one, bam, the description pops up to the side and everything you need is right there and it's so accessible and easy to make. Now, at this point, like, I'm actually going to be trying to run some Pathfinder here soon for the first time in six years, maybe. And, like, I was looking up online, like, oh, where are some good character sheets? And that led me to, like, PC Gen, which is essentially a free Hero Labs. Like, it's not as pretty, but who cares? It's a character sheet. And with PC Gen, you don't get the fluff, right? I mean, it's just the, what's it called? The PRD stuff for Pathfinder and the open, the OGL stuff for everything else. I, I guess it's technically OGL for Pathfinder as well, but you you guys either know what I'm talking about or you think I'm crazy. It doesn't matter. So it, it, it's, the, it's, it's just the crunchy bits. It's just the stats. Still, that, even that is so ridiculously helpful, especially for someone who's been playing a long while. For 4th edition, it was amazing if you were new, right? You know, because it's like, uh, cleric, that doesn't sound exciting. What's, what's that about? Click, bam, it's right there. And it's not like in a book, especially with 4th edition, the way that they did the books. Oh my god, it was so stupid. And I really liked the smaller versions that they came out with. Like the, I can't remember what they called them, but the little compact digest sized uh, ones. I have them in the other room. I should have just looked before I did this, but I forgot I was going to mention them. So anyway, uh, having it all there and being able to create a character that you felt pretty comfortable with in like six minutes, if you knew mostly what you were going for from the beginning, that was pretty awesome. To give it a caveat, because uh, the things that I like about the system, I do like to kind of try to pull back on. I'll say that one of the few fourth edition games that I ran, we had a thing and I was like, no, 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 it's great. You can make a character in five minutes. You'll, you'll love it. And it kind of backfired on me because everybody who went into the program to make their character read every single shred of detail on every single possibility. So it was like, I think one person took like 90 minutes to make a character and it was like, okay, maybe, um, Maybe just having the pictures to look through in one single book, maybe that would have been a better way to go or whatever. But in any case, at the time, it was so revolutionary. And every time they would come out with a new book, the, the updated options would come out usually within a week or two. And that was just so cool. And I really hate the fact that I let my subscription 
subside a few years back because of money issues, because I swear it was like, I, I let it go and I thought, oh, I'll pick this up again when I start playing again. And the next time I looked, it wasn't available to buy anymore. But that's okay. Now we got PC gen and crap like that for free. Although you should probably donate if you have a few spare bucks, whatever. Beyond that, I guess, you know, like I've said many times, the whole reason that I started this was because I wanted to see how that shift from third to fourth felt if you were reading the novels and th there was a lot more kind of meat to the story besides just, here's a new world, it looks totally different. And it doesn't work at all. <laughs> I mean, it's just a really horrible, abrupt shift. The novels that I liked in fourth edition that I can think of, either, either they didn't feel like fourth edition Forgotten Realms. They just felt like classic Forgotten Realms. Like Gilded Rune, I can't really think of anything in there that necessarily makes it fourth edition. I'm sure there probably are if if I knew the rules inside and out, but overall it felt like it could have happened in third edition. Or they were stories that were so much their own thing that they didn't even feel like Forgotten Realms, but it just felt like a fun little read, like Sandstorm was like that for me. It really didn't feel like Forgotten Realms, but I dug the story enough, and I was like, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen next, so I just kept reading. And that's true in general every edition that we've gone through. What's that one with the floating mountain by Jess LeBeau that has, like, superheroes and a revenge story and... Ah, hell, I can't remember it. Uh, Obsidian Ridge, you know? Like, there's one that I enjoyed just because it was, like, every five pages it was like, I don't, Wire Foo might pop up next. I don't know. It doesn't feel like Forgotten Realms, but I am digging the hell out of it. I'm really sad that I didn't feel at home in this realms ever. Coming up next is The Sundering, which is going to pull us into 5th edition, and I have no idea if that's going to feel like the realms again like a lot of its sequels so i assume it will but i i guess we'll see in any case this is michael t bradley realms remembered